Hey, Blue here. I know you were probably expecting music. I may add music to this. I don't know. But we'll know by the time you hear it, the decision would be made because I would have rendered it and completed it and put it out there for you. But for right now, I'm recording this with no musical track. And I think that's just because I just want to make sure that this is heard. <clears throat> One of the... I don't even know where to begin. I really don't. There's so many ways I can begin this, but I'll, I'll start with this. In my life and time, I have had some extraordinary experiences. Wonderful things happen in my life. Places that I've gone, people that I've seen. Nothing short of a miracle. I, I defeated all the odds set against me, right? That'll be another podcast to talk deeply about those. And then to have all these things and be able to move autonomously in my own way and in my own right and in my own power. And my air conditioner just came on. Oh, well, y'all just going to have to deal with it <laughs> for so long and be so comfortable and so confident in myself to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know, I, I climbed the ranks quickly in my life. I haven't even hit 50 yet. I'm almost there. <laughs> but I haven't even hit 50 yet, right? I'm trying to gather the strength to talk about this because it's such a touchy subject. And I, I'm, I'm trying to keep these podcasts no more than five minutes long. Our attention spans aren't long enough for a whole lot, but I'm, I'm shooting for five minutes. Case in point, and I'm already at two, damn. Case in point, I, was, uh, I had the job opportunity of a lifetime. I was working for Sirius XM and it was a place that I always wanted to work got the job not in in the broadcasting booth or in that side of the world but I was like get my foot in the door and I knew I can do the rest I can get there and while I was there I make I was making great strides getting it but it was a hard road to try to get it because I had things people person who just kept their thumb on me. I'll talk about that experience. That is another podcast because my experience there and what happened after that even more so changed me to who I am right now. So case in point, I went through a layoff at this place. And even though Spirit had given me the heads up the day of in the morning because I woke up and the first thing I hear in my spirit is, I have been young, I have been old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seat go begging bread. I'm like, okay, God, what you talking about? What you coming with? Okay. I, that means the fire is coming, but you got me. The same day I was laid off. Part of me was relieved because I was at my breaking point. Again, that's a different conversation, but case in point. After going through such a layoff and not being able to find work in the caliber and uh, range, especially in the pay that I was accustomed to, it was so competitive. I had to take jobs that I probably never would have imagined that I'd have to take. But I'm a survivor and I am never too far removed from doing whatever it takes to make it. From working at a grocery store, which was a good experience, to working where I am now for an airline, right? But I need y'all to know that through that point, I hit rock bottom. 
going to try not to cry. I lost everything. You wouldn't have known it. But spirit requires me that before I'm allowed to walk into what I know I'm about to walk into and live like a stone cold rock star, I have to humble myself, put my pride aside and tell this part of my life that many do not know about. Going through that layoff, I lost myself. I don't know why I'm hearing feedback, but I don't like it. I lost myself, my sense of pride to a certain degree. I didn't lose all of it. Just who I was as a person, like what am I even here for? I mean, it, it stripped everything from me. And then the money stopped being there. And I've never been one to really ask for any help I try to grind it out. It got bad. There were times where I didn't have food to eat. There were times when I didn't know if I was going to even have a roof. I'm sorry. Just give me a second. Because I'm, I'm grateful. There were times that I didn't even know if I had a roof over my head. And so, as things begin to mend, and, and when I go, th go through, I, one of the things I have to celebrate is that when those times became tough, when I would open that refrigerator and there's nothing but bottled water in there, and then I'm having to cook food to make sure my dog eat before I do. I still gave thanks. I still was grateful because I always remembered what Spirit said to me when this kicked off. See, what you gotta understand, when y'all hear me say, heavy is the crown, let me share with you. The other side of me, most of, some of you know, some of you may not, some of you, this may be your first time ever knowing who I am. But I've been endowed with certain gifts and a certain calling on my life that requires me to teach from a, an ethereal, metaphysical, and spiritual standpoint. But in doing so, I have to go through these trials. And not to mention, I'm a 33 life path, born in the 33rd parallel. And my own name is the number 33. If you know numerology, you know what that means for me. When I say heavy is the crown, heavy is the crown. But when I found all these things out, everything made sense as to why I go through the weirdest, hardest things, but always pull through, right? So what was shared with me, what spirit shared with me was that I'm going to take you through, but I'm going to take you through. And I'm like, okay, y'all, there were times I sat on my floor, gun in hand, about to end it. But because I couldn't bear putting my mother through it, my, my kiddo through it, my sister through it, my brothers through it, I, I couldn't. But I begged several nights, God, would you please not wake me up? in the morning. I would scream and cry to my father, please come get me. Please. I'm going to tell you about what happened that night because daddy showed up. Tell you I got a lot to tell y'all. So anyway, I always said that when I make it on the other side of this, 
that I have to do something for people who don't have and especially for people who are homeless because that was almost me. I remember I was in uh, LA and I was at the airport and I didn't get a flight home so it required me to have to stay overnight in the airport. I, I couldn't afford to get one of those high ass hotel rooms and even if I did I wasn't going to I was going to pay that. Hotels are high in Los Angeles. So I said I'm going to hunker down at this airport. You know, I'm tough. I can hang it. I can hang, hang with it. So now it's the middle of the night at the airport in Los Angeles, LAX. And you can kind of go in and out and I would go out, have a smoke, whatever. And then it hit me. I, I started looking around and I started seeing the people who had no choice but to sleep at the airport and sleep outside the airport. And I immediately began to weep and go into praise because I knew that could have been me. So fast forward to today. I'm always thinking when I walk into this blessing that is sure to come in a way that is going to change my life forever that I won't go into today but you'll know it when, when it happens that's for sure I said I gotta I gotta have something I've been thinking all this time what what am I gonna do am, am I gonna buy um, homes and, and turn them into you know free places for the homeless to live I had and I have to do something for those who don't have a home I had worked in my storage you know trying to clean it out a little bit purge a few things I came across some pillows and as soon as I saw the pillows I hear the universe say put them in your car you're going to give them to somebody I love these pillows. Hey, I got to be obedient. Remember, master teacher. So, they've been in my car for two, three days. I come home today after having a wonderful break between my work shift. Because I have another job, too. And I took a break. And I... Uh, had a nice little happy hour with my dear sister, Latoya. Hey, baby, I love you. And thank you. She's a real one, y'all. And I, I came home, and behind my beautiful home here, there is a, uh, there's a, a police station. I'm always living by police stations. I know that's my dad's a cop. It's not like everywhere I go, I'm living by police stations. If it's not, if it, I'm living by police stations or FedEx, one of the two. My dad worked for both. Every time. It's weird. It's not weird as dad. And so I looked over there, and, and there's this manhole cover, this manhole cover, and there's steam that's running under the under the street. So that steam is hitting that manhole cover and it's heating up. So if you, even if you walk close to it, you can feel the heat radiating from that area. And a lot of the people who are transients or homeless will go and lay there on top of the manhole cover just to keep warm. So I get out my car, parking garage, get out the car, look over, and I see... A man sitting there, and it's, it's midnight. And I knew then, I said, he's going to get that pillow. He's going to get that pillow. Because he was laying flat on it. And laying, you know, on his stomach, but laying his head on his hands. And I'm like, everybody deserves a decent night's sleep. The best they can get. 
And again, all I could think to myself was, that could have been me. So, I go inside the house, get the dog. And I knew I was going to get the pillow out the car. But then I had an old Sirius XM um, blanket. I said, that's definitely going. <laughs> I'm going to give that to him. So I gathered it up. And I, and I walked over to him. And when I walked over to him, he was knocked out. But I wasn't afraid. There are people. And I just gently said to him, Sir, 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 until it, he would until it registered in his conscious mind that someone was calling out to him. Finally he opened his eyes. Clearly you could tell he was exhausted and a bit discombobulated because here's somebody walking up to him in the middle of the night saying, Sir. And he just kind of looked up at me and I handed him the blanket. He grabbed the blanket and, and laid his head on it to go back to sleep. And I said, sir, and he turned and looked at me again. I'm hearing feedback and I don't like it. He turned to look at me again and I handed him the pillow and he grabbed the pillow, laid his head on the pillow and went back to sleep. I turned around. And I began to give my dog a brief little walk. So I walked around the building, up the road a little bit. I don't go too far. You know, it is late. I'm still a lady. I don't go too far. I'm still cognizant and conscious of my surroundings. So I turned around and I came right on back. And then when I hit the corner, y'all, I could still, I could see the man when I hit the corner he had covered up in the very blanket that I had given him. And there he lay, on top of that manhole cover, sleeping well with a pillow under his head and a blanket covering his body. And all I could do was just look at him and weep and pray for him and pray for his journey pray for his life and in the same sense give thanks because it, it could have been me it could have been me so I hope that you all hear this and remember that the people who have less than you are still people too and before you go throwing out things that you think you don't need, think about the people who don't have that wish they did have the need for what you have or wish they had what you're giving away. Mm. But in that, remember, I also said that I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do when I walked into my calling and I think I figured it out. And I said it was going to be called. I first said when I was walking into my place. I'm going to give out blankets and pillows. When I see people. Who are. Laying on the sleep. Lay, laying on the street. Or resting anywhere. And not comfortable. And I was like. Mm, what am I going to call that? I'm like. I'll call it a good night's rest. But that changed because when I looked at him and looked how well he was sleeping and resting and how his head was finally propped up comfortably on a pillow, I was imagining the, the level of good sleep that he was getting from the norm. And so I figured I would name whatever this thing that I'm going to do, Yay Yay's Bosom. Yay yay is your above for mama, mother, yay yay. And as many of you may know, I do follow in an initiate of Yoruba Ifa. 
but still hold on to those good old Kojic values too. And so, yeah, yeah, it's bosom, mama's bosom. I just think it's fitting. That's all. Later, Gators. Bye. And be well.